Hello everyone. My name is Paul Carton and I'm here with Designing Music Now. Bit of a new face, I don't think I've seen you guys before. That's cool though. Um, today we're going to be reviewing Spitfire's Bernard Herrmann Composer Toolkit. It's the year 2019 though, it's about a year and a half since it came out, so why are we coming back to it? I don't know. Why not? There's also some reasons. Uh, so uh, Spitfire is out with their studio series now. Um, they've got strings out, they've got brass out, and they're going to be coming out with woodwinds soon. And they're all recorded in the same space that this library was recorded in. And that's cool because when this Bernard Herrmann library first came out, it was kind of this weird outcast in the Spitfire line. They were so used to recording in Lyndhurst Hall at Air Studios, but that big place with the big hexagon, you know the one. You've heard it you've used other spitfire libraries and you know what's up um you know it there it was kind of this weird little library with this very tight roomy sound and almost cheesy sound in a way that nobody was used to from spitfire it was kind of a breath of fresh air but also kind of terrifying because like how are we supposed to use this what else is it gonna go with it's this weird library with all these weird articulations that really you know, you could do it with other libraries, but um, they don't have the same flair, but you can't match the sound, blah, blah, blah. It's a different landscape now, I think. Um, and there's some other libraries out too, such as a Cinematic Studio Series, their Strings and Brass are out now, and they both have kind of the same sort of dry sound, while uh, the Studio One stuff like Bernard Herrmann and uh, Spitfire Studio Series have a very have a much tighter, denser, dry sound. It's really not dry, actually. It's very roomy. It's it's not a dry sound, it's a roomy sound. And I think that's an important distinction. But yeah, this library now has partners to play with, and I think it's worth revisiting. So yeah, it's uh, regardless of the room, it's a very special library with a very unique focus. It's inspired by the orchestration of Bernard Herrmann, all of these very specific combinations of instruments direct from his scores. They were able to work with um his foundation to get some of this stuff. There's some cool interviews on the site. You should check them out. But yeah, um, it's engineered, recorded, and mixed by Simon Rhodes, all recorded in the Studio One at Air Studios in the UK. Great stuff. It's a whopping 150 gigabytes. Once it's installed, you'll need a bit more to install it in the first place. But um, it's jam-packed with content, a lot of mic positions, a lot of combinations of instruments, a lot of articulations, a lot of really good effects patches. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird library, but I think it's really fun, and um, we'll dive on in. So this is a review, so I'll lay down my critiques, my um, problems with the library, my intended uses, the ways that I've been finding use out of it at least, and um, yeah. So as a quick primer, I do have a couple of things going on. I've got a couple of sends set up in east-west spaces too. Um, adding a bit of extra reverb. Uh, notice that I have the decay time down on all of them, so it's a tighter sound I'm getting out of these things than the usual big concert hall. But uh, be aware of that, it's a um, not a completely dry sound. I've been having so much fun playing around with this. Just making this demo was like such a blast. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff happening in here. I've got some orchestra chords. Dynamic 
dynamic layers. Very cool. Some very fun orchestrated movement in there. The fluttery bits. I love those. I've also got the um, Studio Orchestra Core Multi in here, which is just shorts. Very fun stuff. They've also got longs in here. A lot of effects patches. I'll go into those in a bit, though. Um, I've got high strings octaves in here. Um, I'm using the straight longs patch, not the legato, because the the regular long patch actually has molto vibrato in it. So let me turn this up. That's standard vibrato, but then you turn it up. Oh, and it gets beautiful. It's wonderful. Of course, not vibrato down at the bottom. Very romantic quality to those vibratos, especially the multos. I really love it. And I'm using those because the legato patch only has non-vib and standard vibrato. Let me get back over there. Um, I'm using the high strings trills in here, apparently, <laughs> for some um, has dynamic layers as well. You also notice I'm using one of the uh, wonderful ram saving and also pre-mixed by Simon Rhodes, uh, stereo patches, and these are great. Um, you've got a, a broader perspective in mix one and a tighter perspective with more close mics mixed in for mix two. Love that stuff. Um, high strings effects. <laughs> All this chatter stuff. These actually have dynamic layers. Very cool. Fun stuff. I use those in a few places to add a bit of tension in the background. Um, I've got low strings and trombones. I'm using the shorts. Very meaty sound. Love it so much. Uh, flute and piccolo. I'm using the legatos. And if I'm not mistaken, let me check here, actually. These have vibrato control. Flat. Vibrato. Very nice. And that's in the legato patch, too. Um, okay, let's hop out here. Horns, just some big bwoms. They don't have legato in this one, but the longs are pretty good. some shorts in here those are pretty good um how about here trumpets and xylophones this is actually one of my favorite special little patches in here i'm using that in this section for some fun stuff it's i'm using the shorts in a uh, octave spread so it gives you a little more range on the keyboard Trombones. Ooh, these get good. Pretty sure these were sampled in an octave with uh, both regular trombones and bass trombones. Great stuff. Harp and vibrato. Uh, oh, harp and <laughs> vibraphone. Sorry. Vib, I have it condensed over in my track view. Um... This is one of my favorite patches. Great for arpeggios and stuff. And uh, you've got the harp in there, very nice, delicate sound. But then you got the vibraphone in there um, with the vibes turned on. So kind of a, a ringy, chorusy effect in there that's really lovely. They also um, have some great chords in here um, that I used in one spot, but I should use them more. Mm 
That's just me playing all the C's, and only in the minor. If you can see there, I'm only in the minor patches. <laughs> that's that's pretty fun. There's there's a lot here. I hope you're I hope you're getting the picture. I've got one synth in here. Which is in a seemingly stripped down version of their usual kind of synthy engine that Spitfire's been working on for a while. And uh, excitingly, they recorded direct input, but they also recorded through some amps and through the main uh, trees, ambient, outrigger mics in the studio. So they played these out into the studio and recorded them, and I think that's really cool. You get a nice roomy sound in the samples. Um, down here, uh, some really fun percussion stuff. A lot of them have rolls with dynamic layers. Snare. Oh, there's some. Those are trash cans. Bongos, anvils and stuff. All sorts of fun little bits and pieces in there. Uh, ooh, one of my other favorites in the library, the timpani. Um, ooh, hot tip in the... Uh, out of the easy view here, you've got a play two-handed option. And if you look at the keyboard down there, let me move it this way so you can see it behind my stuff there. It mirrors the whole keyboard, the whole range up into the higher area. So you can play two-handed. So this is also up here. So you can play rolls and fun rhythms with two hands. always a wonderful thing to have a timpani um oh and i should point out that there's all different types of sticks in here too there's some hot rod hits that are really cool i love it what what's not to love about that um and yeah, I've got a couple other assisting pieces here. I've got a uh, Steinway D from Orchestral Tools recorded in Teldex. I, just a nice concert piano. But down here, I have a couple of pieces of Spitfire Studio Brass. And this kind of comes into my point earlier. Um, I've got some Staccatissimos. And it's recorded in the same space as Bernard Herrmann, so it just pairs in perfectly. Unfortunately, at the moment, I only have the standard edition, so I can't play with the mics. Although, we should be getting the pro version pretty soon, and we'll have a big review on all of that stuff soon enough. Um, yeah, I also have the uh, horn from Studio Brass in here as well. Oh, Spitfire, help. Get out of here. Never come back. <laughs> And just comparing that to the horns in Bernard Herrmann. I do notice that Bernard has a bit of a warmer sound, but the space matches. And I think that's very important for when you're starting to build out an arrangement that started with the Bernard Herrmann Composer Toolkit, um, you have now um, some proper orchestral elements to play with in the rest of the studio series, and that's great. That's just the best. Um, so yeah, that's all of that. So um, let's talk about this library a little bit more and some kind of technical details, because I think there's some interesting elements to talk about. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I very much recommend you 
kind of mess around with some additional reverb when you're working with this library. It, the dry sound is great. It's recorded well. Um, it's all in there in the samples. And if you want that really dry sound, it's perfect. But I do think that supplementing a little bit or even a bit more than a little bit can be really, really doable um, up to a point. So um, Studio One at Air Studios is a pretty small place. Um, you can look at some pictures online of this place. It's a uh, 100 square meters compared to uh, Lyndhurst Hall, which is Spitfire's normal recording space at Air Studios, which is about 300 meters squared in that main hexagon. But then you've got the galleries up top, which a lot of bloom comes from. The sound travels up there and kind of swims around and comes back and it's beautiful. It's wonderful. They even set up mics up there for some of the libraries. Um, gosh, yeah, that's a, a much bigger space. But then you've got something like Orchestral Tools Teldex Hall, which is 450 square meters, which is huge. That's why that library has such this, this big, blooming, massive sound to it. All of their stuff does. Um, and it's great, but um, very different than this library. I'd say something a little more similar is... Uh, Trackdown Studios, which is where Cinematic Studio series was recorded. Um, so Cinematic Studio Strings, Cinematic Studio Brass, all of them were recorded in this place. It's about 440 square meters. That's pretty big though, right? So that's interesting. Um, that's, that's another good point that uh, just because the size is similar, the sound and the reverb can be very different. So there's obviously a lot of stuff set up in those sessions for Cinematic Studio Series to kind of deaden the sound and give it a tighter sound. Teldex is tall and it's got a lot of reflective surfaces, but I assume that um, that place that a uh, Cinematic Studio Series was recorded in has a lot more deadening on the walls, it's a shorter ceiling, stuff like that, that kind of deadens the sound, gives it that studio feeling. But then um, Air Studio One is really interesting. It's a lot of hard surfaces, very close. And you look up pictures of the uh, recording sessions and they're almost up against the walls, some of the, some of the players. And um, that's interesting because since they're so close to these surfaces in the space, you get a lot of reflections back. You get a lot of um, ambience baked into all the samples. You can't escape it. There's nowhere in the room that you can sit a horn, for example mic it close and expect to be far enough from the walls to not catch some of that natural sound. So when people say, oh, Bernard Herrmann sounds cheesy, it sounds really dry, um, it's not a dry library at all. There's a lot of room in it. It's a very dense and tight room, though. So it sounds, it's very short, but it's not dry. And I think that's a really important distinction. It's a very lovely room. I love the sound of it, but know that... It's not going to give you that big cinematic sound of a big symphonic orchestra in a large scoring stage or in a concert hall. Not at all. And um, I think that's where the library suffers and that you're not going to be able to get it to that place. I think it's also important to talk about some of the negatives of the library. It's such a massive thing. Like, think about that, 150 gigabytes of samples, all these different mic positions and all of these different articulations. I mean, you open this thing up. I mean, just in the studio orchestra patch, you have all of these articulations here and different uh, dynamics layers, all this stuff. There was a lot of editing time. And um, I mean, you look at the, they, they recorded this stuff in 2016. Obviously, Bernard Herrmann Composer Toolkit was the first kind of like almost beta test of their studio sound. Like we didn't know that they were going to come out with the strings and the brass and soon the woodwinds in that studio. So this is obviously their first run through. I wonder if they wanted to get it out quick to test what people thought of the sound. But um, yeah, it was all recorded a while ago. It obviously took a while to put this together. But there's some weirdness in some of the in some of the libraries, in some of the patches rather. Just some general bugs, some articulations that are swapped around, some rendering errors where articulations run off the screen because there's too many of them. Although other patches they properly break down into two rows. It's it's weird. Some funkiness and some of the stereo mixes. This is all stuff that I submitted to Spitfire's bugs very recently. So I'm hoping. 
um, that they will patch these things soon. And I think they will. I, I almost wonder if a lot of this hasn't been noticed just because, you know, I feel like this is definitely one of their <laughs> lesser selling libraries. It's a huge project and they obviously are so passionate about it. But um, in the end, there's a couple of places where stuff seems a little bit rushed. Um, I wonder if they realize like, oh, we've recorded all this content and like, oh, we need to get it out and like, oh, just kind of push it out so we can test what people think of this type of sound, not the Bernard stuff, but the uh, studio sound and then uh, push forward and see how long they can take on the rest of it to really polish it up. At the moment, I don't see the complete polish in this, even though there's so much stuff, it's so good. And um, a lot of the stuff really just works. There's just some like weird graphical interface stuff, some weird swapped articulations that, it it's a little funny, it's a little funny. And that a year and a half later, these things haven't been patched out, I think says some things about how many people are buying this and who even worries about that stuff. And also maybe people notice the bugs and they just don't know how to submit them. Go to Spitfire's support page and send a chat, email, whatever. Let them know. They'll log it. They'll try and do something about it. They're normally pretty cool over there. But yeah, um, some weird bugs. Uh, oh, something else that has bothered me a lot as I've explored this library. And this is just kind of a learning of the library. This is stuff I can get past, but is a bit tricky for new users. Um, the extended techniques are a little confusing. Um, wondering why they would like put certain things in some of these patches, but not in others. This is a great example, high strings half section. If I load this up, you get a good handful of articulation. You get legato, you get lungs, consorts, flotondos, which are beautiful, by the way. They're the best. Oh, let me play them for a second. It's so good. It's so good. If Spitfire can do anything, they can they can do a good flotando patch. Um, spiccatos, tenudos, consorts, uh, spiccatos, tremolo, and some effects chatter. Now, if you go into the advanced sections, extended techniques, and you load up high strings, half section, core techniques, this isn't even broken out into two patches. It's one patch. It has all the same articulations as before, but a bunch more. So it's got, um, pizzicato, it's got harmonics, it's got a load of more effects patches. Like that's uh, Sol Pont Tremolo. Very shimmery glassy sound. I love that. Um it's it's a little weird and um so in some ways I'd be like, "Oh, just go into the extended techniques folder and live there." But uh some of the patches just aren't in here like percussion and timpani are missing. I think there's another one that's just missing from this uh section 2, which is kind of interesting there, there's a bit of redundancy that I don't entirely understand um why not leave the others without extra patches in extended out as well there's some other patches in here that mirror exactly what's in the main patches out here and it's just kind of an organizational thing that slightly bothers me I'm a stickler I guess for organization even if I'm a disorganized mess in my real life but we don't need to talk about that um, yeah, it's a little weird. And, uh, I, I'm not expecting them to go through and fix any of that. So that's fine. I've, I've kind of learned over time where the things I want are, and I can handle that. No worries. But it's a little funny. Just a little, again, maybe a little rushed. I'm not sure. But wrapping up, yeah, it's a really fun library. It's a blast to play with. Get it. I mean, it's, it's on sale for 30% right now. If you're not going to snag it, then I think you're missing out. Because uh, if you like the style, though, <laughs> that that's a tricky sell. Because it is very specific. Um, it's not entirely flexible into other genres for two reasons. For the uh, constrained articulations and preset orchestrations of instruments. And the sound. I mean, it's this really t tight, roomy sound that really complements the style and complements... I think other styles too, but kind of 
segregates it off from some of the bigger, more symphonic libraries that Spitfire and a lot of other developers have out, especially orchestral tools. It's like, it's definitely going to be hard to mesh this library with anything by, by orchestral tools. Like, good luck with that. If you can do it, tell me about it. I'm excited to hear. I don't think it's too possible, but maybe I'm naive. But yeah, it's, um, I like it. I recommend it. It's a weird little thing, but um, a weird big thing, actually. 150 gigabytes is not little. But it's fun. I like it. Get it if you like it, too. If you like my demo, go, go to the website, listen to their demos. If you want to watch somebody trudge through the whole library and play every articulation, something that <laughs> I'm not going to do, um, then, gosh, Paul Thompson did it. It's on the website. Go watch it. It's worth watching. This has been Paul Carden with Designing Music Now, and I hope you had a good time. Hope to see you guys again soon. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, and let me know what you think about the library. If you have it, tell me about it. If you bought it because I told you to and you hate it, tell me about it and dislike the video. Please do it. It feeds me. Okay, bye everybody.